floor. Mr. Uh, Mr. President. The Senator from Vermont is recognized. Mr. President, I'm going to try to bring this budget debate uh, down to earth and talk a little bit about the reality of what's happening and go beyond the, a lot of numbers that are out there. My good friend from Alabama, who sits with me on the Budget Committee, makes the point that this country has a severe budget crisis. And he is right. He is right. The question is, how did we get to where we are today, and how do we go forward in a way that is fair and responsible to address this crisis? And in that regard, the senator from Alabama and I have some very strong disagreements. How do we get to where we were, where we are today, when not so many years ago, the day that George W. Bush became president, we had a significant surplus. We had a surplus when Clinton left office. Now we have a major deficit crisis. Well, there are a number of reasons. Number one, against my vote, we are fighting a war in Iraq, which by the time we take care of our last veteran is going to cost us some three trillion dollars. War in Iraq. I didn't hear any of my Republican friends saying, we can't go to war unless we figure out a way to pay for that. Number two, my Republican friends for years have been pushing huge tax breaks for the very, very wealthiest people in this country. I didn't hear them ask how that was going to be paid for. Number three, on the President Bush with strong Republican support against my vote, Congress passed a $400 billion plus Medicare Part D prescription drug program written by the insurance companies and the drug companies. Drove up the deficit. Number four, against my vote, Congress voted for a massive bailout of Wall Street. Didn't hear too many people talking about how could we pay for that? $700 billion to bail out Wall Street. Didn't hear them arguing that it was too much money would drive up the deficit. Now, the Republicans yesterday, Mr. President, brought forth and voted on H.R. 1. And almost all of them voted for it, and those that didn't actually wanted to go further. Now, the main point that I want to make this morning is, A, we do have to address the deficit crisis. But B, we have to address it in a way that is fair and is responsible and not solely on the backs of working families, the middle class, the elderly, the sick, and the poor. That is immoral, that is wrong, and that is bad economics. To my mind, it is absolutely absurd that when my Republican friends talk about deficit reduction, they forget to talk about the reality that the wealthiest people in this country today have never had it so good, that the effective, the real tax rate for the richest people in this country is the lowest on record, and that the wealthiest people in this country, the top 2%, have received many, many hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks. So I ask my Republican friends, why do you want to balance the budget on the backs of low-income children, low-income senior citizens, those that are sick, those that are vulnerable, without asking the wealthiest people in this country who have never had it so good to put one penny, one penny into deficit reduction. I think that is wrong, and the American people think that is wrong. When we talk about deficit reduction, we have got to talk about shared sacrifice. Everybody playing a role. Not just little kids, not just the elderly, not just the sick, but even, dare I say it, people who have a whole lot of money and who have never done so well. Mr. President, I have not been impressed at how the media has been covering this issue because I think they have not made it clear to the American people how devastating the cuts are that the Republicans want to impose on working families. 
Let me just very briefly tick some of them off. The Republicans want to throw over 200,000 children off of the Head Start program. Every working family in America knows how hard it is today to come up with affordable childcare, early childhood education. We have the highest rate of childhood poverty in the industrialized world. Republican solution is slash Head Start by 20%, cut 218,000 kids off a of Head Start, and lay off 55,000 55, Head Start instructor, instructors. Mr. President, you well know that the cost of high college education today is so high that many young people are giving up their dream of going to college, while many others are graduating deeply in debt. Republican solution, slash Pell Grants by $5.7 billion and reducing, reduce or eliminate Pell Grants <clears throat> for 9.4 million low-income college students. Middle-class families, working-class families, you hear that? We're going to balance the budget by either eliminating or lowering Pell Grants, the ability of young people to go to college for over 9 million college students. Now, I know in my office we get calls every week from senior citizens, people with disabilities, widows, who are having a hard time getting a timely response toward their Social Security claim. It takes too long to process the paperwork. What the Republicans want to do is slash the Social Security Administration, the people who administer Social Security for seniors, for the disabled, for widows and orphans, by $1.7 billion. And that means a half a million Americans who are legally entitled to Social Security benefits will have to wait significantly longer times in order to receive them. Mr. President, we have 50 million Americans who have no health insurance today. 45,000 Americans die because they don't get to a doctor on time. Last year, as part of health care reform, I worked very hard with a member, many members of the Senate, to expand community health centers so that more and more low- and moderate-income people could walk into a doctor's office, get health care, dental care, low-cost prescription drugs, mental health counseling. Republicans want to slash in H.R. 1, the bill they voted for yesterday, they want to deny primary health care to 11 million Americans at a time when state after state is cutting back on Medicaid. What are you supposed to do if you're 50 years old, you have a pain in your chest, you don't have any health insurance? Where do you go? And Republicans want to deny health care to another 11 million Americans. Mr. President, for the poorest people in this country, community services, block grants, provide the infrastructure, the ability to get out emergency food help, emergency help to pay the electric bill. LIHEAP, they are the infrastructure in this country that protects the poorest and most vulnerable people. Republicans want to slash $405 million from the community services block grant. That is wrong, and the president's proposed cut to the community service block grant is also wrong. We have, in real terms, 16 percent of our population today, our workforce, is really unemployed. If you add together the official unemployment, those people have given up looking for work. Those people who are working part-time want to work full-time. Republicans want to slash $2 billion in federal job training programs. Republicans want to slash $400 million in LIHEAP. In LIHEAP, that is the program that in my state and all over this country enables people to stay warm in the wintertime. We have a lot of senior citizens in the state of Vermont getting by on $13,000. $14,000 a year income. They need help. It gets cold in Vermont. It gets 20 below zero. You got to stay warm. People don't have the income. LIHEAP has been a very valuable tool. Republicans want to slash $400 million for LIHEAP. They want to slash the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, by 30 percent. These are the people who have successfully enforced the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, so that the air we breathe doesn't give us asthma, doesn't provide us with the suit, which makes us sick. Clean Air Act has been an enormous success 
in cleaning up our air. Republicans want to slash that by 30 percent. Republicans want to cut the women and infant nutrition programs. This is the program that provides the WIC program that provides supplemental nutrition programs for women, infants, and children. They want to cut that by $750 million. Poverty in America is increasing. What we understand is that pregnant women and little kids do not get good nutrition. The likelihood is that they're going to get, that the births might be low weight or the little babies might come down with illnesses if they don't have good nutrition. Poverty is increasing. And yet the Republicans want to cut the WIC program by $750 million, 10%. Title I education funding. Everybody understands we have problems with education right now, large dropout rates. Republicans want to, want to cut $5 billion from the Department of Education. On and on and on it goes. Now, what do I think? Do I think that it is appropriate that we balance the budget on preg low-income pregnant women and infants who need nutrition? Do I think you should throw 200,000 kids off the Head Start program? Do I think you cut the Social Security Administration severely? Do I think you cut Planned Parenthood, which has done such a good job in preventing unwanted pregnancies? Does that make sense? I don't think so. I don't think that is good for America. But I do believe we have to move toward a balanced budget. So what is one way to go forward other than savage cuts on programs for the most vulnerable people in this country? And that is, I think we have got to begin talking about revenue, not just cuts. Mr. President, today I will be introducing legislation which does two things. Number one, it creates a millionaire surtax which will be used strictly for deficit reduction. It will be a 5.4% surtax on income over $1 million. That says that all income, all households that have income of over $1 million will pay a 5.4% surtax on that income, which will go into a emergency deficit reduction fund. Just doing that, asking millionaires to pay a little bit more in taxes after all of the huge tax breaks they have received will bring in approximately $50 billion a year. Now, Mr. President, uh, I think that that is a good idea, but it is not just me who thinks it is a good idea. Uh, recently, last week, there was an NBC News Wall Street Journal poll, and they asked the American people, what is the best way to go forward on deficit reduction? 81% of the American people believe it is totally acceptable or mostly acceptable to impose a surtax on millionaires to reduce the deficit. The American people get it. They understand you can't move toward deficit reduction just by cutting programs that working families, the middle class, low-income people desperately need in order to survive in the midst of this terrible recession. They understand that serious, responsible deficit reduction requires shared sacrifice. It is insane, and I use that word advisable, advisably. It is insane to be talking about deficit reduction, as my Republican friends do on one hand, and then say, oh yes, we have got to give hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks to the top 1%, the top 2%, when those guys are doing phenomenally well, are seeing an effective tax rate lower than it has been in decades and have received huge tax breaks already. Why does anyone think it is moral or right to move toward deficit reduction on the backs of the weak and the vulnerable? I understand, and I know something about politics, I do understand that the parents of kids who are in Head Start do not make large campaign contributions, and I know that the senior citizens of this country who need some help with Social Security, do not make large campaign contributions. I understand that. I understand that college students desperately trying to go through college on a Pell Grant do not make large campaign contributions. But there is a sense of morality here that we have to deal with. And I think that it makes no sense. I think it is immoral. I think it is bad economics to balance the budget on the backs of working families 
while we give continued tax breaks to those people who don't need it. So, Mr. President, today we will be introducing uh, a piece of legislation which I hope will have strong support. I think it paves the way for us to go forward in serious deficit reduction uh, in a way that is fair. Do we need to make cuts? Absolutely. Absolutely. But do we also need to ask the wealthiest people in this country to start contributing to a deficit reduction? I think that we do. So once again, the legislation that I've introduced today creates a millionaire surtax of 5.4 percent, which would bring in about $50 billion a year to be used exclusively for an emergency deficit reduction fund. And we also end tax breaks for big oil and gas companies, which are bringing about $3.5 billion a year. Over the past decade, the five largest oil companies in the United States have earned nearly a trillion dollars in profits. Meanwhile, in recent years, some of the very largest oil companies in America have paid absolutely nothing in federal income taxes. In fact, some of them have actually gotten a refund, a rebate from the IRS. So that is my plea. My plea is that, yes, the need for deficit reduction is real, it is urgent, let's go forward. But let's go forward in a way that is fair and responsible and not simply on the backs of the most vulnerable people in this country. Uh, and with that, Mr. President, I would yield the floor and note the absence of a quorum. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka.